Okay, guys, so let's talk about the game. So I'm sorry I didn't do this for the last two games, like the South Korea game and the Switzerland game. But we're going to talk about this today. Not, It's not even necessarily about the game. It's just that um, I kind of wanted to talk about some other things a little bit. It's going to be the game and other things, right? So you know what's, you know what's really interesting to me? And it's not something that I just realized. It's just a thing that you just kind of see in general. Um that people are definitely like very, very reactionary, like very, very reactionary. Um, I think that people let negativity, anger, completely cloud their judgment, their thoughts to, to speak the way that they speak, you know? Um, I think that when it comes down to this game and, you know, normally what you see from Twitter, because to be fair, guys, like Twitter is a toxic, toxic, cesspool of negativity there like that's probably the worst if you're a regular person you should probably not have a twitter account to be honest with you like a social media in general can be a really weird thing so here's the thing man everyone's reactionary because this starting lineup that we lined up with today um not looking at it from hindsight because everybody is always looking at stuff in hindsight this was a perfectly fine team to start off with in regards to every single player, right? Um, when it comes down to the player playing through the middle, an argument can be made for Ruben Neves or William Carvalho. He he opted for Ruben Neves. There was a point in this game where I do feel like Fernando Santos was incorrect in regards to the subs that he made, but this wasn't a bad starting lineup to start off with. Now, obviously, with Twitter people or online people, maybe even some of you guys, uh, you know, you'll say... You know, Ronaldo should have started the game, Ronaldo this, Ronaldo that. Here's the thing, guys, right? Is that, um, again, you're looking at it from a hindsight perspective. Gonzalo Ramos just came off of a game where he scored a hat-trick, right? Regardless of it being Switzerland, regardless of it being Morocco, it doesn't matter what team you face. This is a knockout format tournament, okay? Knockout format tournament, you are going to face people that are going to park the bus on a consistent basis, okay? I don't know if you guys have noticed, but anti-football has kind of been the victorious teams for the most part in this World Cup. Brazil, how did Brazil score against Croatia? Really think about this for a second, okay? When you face these teams, you will only score based off of individual brilliance or moments of luck. That's it. When, when you play real life professional football, right? And you're facing a park the bus team and you start crossing the ball, do you guys think that crossing is gonna be generally considered like a massive skill? It isn't. It's a moment of luck, okay? To be fair to Gonzalo Ramos, definitely had a poor game. I'm not going to say that he didn't, but it wasn't a bad starting lineup to line up with, right? Now, in the first half, honestly, the game was pretty boring for the most part. And guess why? Because this is a knockout format tournament, okay? The person who scores the first goal is going to signify how the rest of the games go. This isn't like Champions League football where you have a variable where it's like, okay, at least we have two games that we can play, okay? Okay. That's not a thing in the World Cup. These are one-off games. So the way that you have to manage these results is different. And like I said, a park the bus team could potentially win against you. Um, so this lineup was not wrong. At the end of the day, the goal that we conceded was yet again a defensive mistake. You're not going to blame Santos for a defensive mistake from our defenders. You know, Ruben Diaz got absolutely dunked on by Nasseri, right? And Diogo Costa didn't grab the ball properly. Regardless, Diogo Costa would have had to, you know, he would have had to have gone for that opportunity. Regardless, he has to go for the jump there. He misses and they end up conceding. But the fault wasn't completely on Diogo Costa. Ruben Diaz 100% gets dunked on, okay? When that cross came in, I'm like, he has to grab it because because this guy is a monster in the air. And you know that you know this from like his Sevilla days, okay? So we can see that goal. That game basically that goal basically signified how the rest of the game was gonna go, okay? Because the game was already based off of tactics and defending from to be honest both sides because it's it's like nervous nervousness from both sides because guys listen like i said brazil plays brilliant football okay people go for the manager for luis enrique for brazil's manager but brazil scored off of individual brilliance from neymar it, all he needed was two players on his team to pass the ball off to him two times but they scored off of individual brilliance Generally speaking, if Brazil were to, were to win that game, they would have deserved it. But in football, moments happen. You can see blah, blah, blah. Look, Croatia, Croatia goes on the counterattack. Marquinhos with a deflection. It goes into the back of the net. Now the game is 1-1. And they're going to they're gonna play for that, for that penalty shootout because they know that Brazil's team is a great attacking team, right? 
in our situation, we go into the second half. In the second half, I do believe that we should have made subs a little bit earlier in certain situations, right? So let's say, for instance, uh, we go into the second half, we put on João Cancelo and Cristiano Ronaldo. Here's the thing. These two subs were good subs. I, I'm 100% with these two subs. However, the Ruben Neves sub, I was even telling my dad, I have to, I can't say these things on Twitter because people get way too toxic, okay? With Ronaldo being on the pitch, it should not have been Ruben Neves off the pitch, okay? You should have kept the balance in your team in the 50th minute, right? And you should have taken off Otavio, right? Because if you take off Otavio and your team, you're going to work with you know, uh, players like Bruno Fernandes, uh, Bernardo Silva, these types of guys on your team are going to be very important. This sub right here is where I have an issue, okay? It's this area right here. So this area right here should have been done much earlier, okay? Uh, it wasn't even necessarily that. So I, 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 I thought that this sub over here was incorrect. Like I said, Santos, I think for the most part, like 90% of the subs he did are really nice. But this one I don't think made sense, right? Because once you take off Neves, you could see that the bounce in our midfield to build up the play was completely gone, right? So him putting Vitinha on for Otavio was super late into the game, okay? That type of sub should have already been made in the beginning of the, or at the beginning of the second half like he did over here in the 51st minute. Rafael Leão should have gone on for Gonzalo Ramos earlier in the game. What should have happened here is we should have switched to a 4-2-3-1 formation, right? Where Vitinha is going to be that player that is not necessarily going to be playing in a 4-2-3-1, but it's like a 4-1-1-3-1, like kind of like that, right? Where Vitinha is going to dictate the play in the middle, but you're going to have that bounce with Ruben Neves in the back. And then at some point, near the end of the game, right? That's when you would take off Ruben Neves and then put another attacker on the pitch, right? That's how that's how I personally would have managed it, right? Um, so these subs, I think they were made really late. Gonzalo Ramos wasn't involved in the game, you know, for the most part. He had that one opportunity on the header. He didn't score the opportunity. We had many opportunities with different players. Pepe at the end could have scored the goal, didn't score it. Uh, Bruno Fernandes with the crossbar. João Felix on the left-footed strike. Bono with a great save. Again, guys, it's 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 a knockout format based off of moments that happen in the game. So I think that when it comes to the substitutions, these two, like I said earlier, I think these were the right substitutions. But this area right here, that's why I feel like he did it too late. We should we should have switched to that four one one three one uh, quicker. Ronaldo should have been the main guy up top. Liao has to be the guy switched off to the left side position because Juan Felix was getting absolutely dusted by Hakimi in that right back area okay he was getting dusted by him he had to play more central and when he did switch to a more central role he became better and but like I said I think this sub was just super super late into the game last 20 minutes I didn't think that made sense Otavio definitely should have been subbed off earlier uh Ricardo Horta for Diogo Dalo I'm 100% okay with the substitution especially near the end of the game where we need to attack as much as possible so the balance of the substitutions that he made I don't think we're wrong. It was just the players that he took off initially. I think that's what was wrong, right? So at the end of the day, um, I understand that a lot of you guys, I know that people on social media are going to be like, oh, Fernando Santos is this, Fernando Santos is this. Guys, let me tell you something, man. I don't think Luis Enrique is a bad manager, okay? But he ended up losing as well. I don't think that... Um, how do, I don't know how to pronounce the Brazilian manager's name. Tite? 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 I think it's Tite. Um... I don't think he's a bad manager either. I think Brazil actually played a very solid game against Croatia, but they lost off of moments, guys. They lost off of moments, okay? That's football. That's how, that's how it happens in these knockout uh, tournaments. Guys, listen. Real Madrid versus Man City. Do you guys think Real Madrid was a better team than Man City? They weren't, okay? They weren't. They won the game off of individual brilliance. And, like, obviously, Man City is sleeping at the end of the game. Right. But Benzema's individual brilliance is what won them the game. That's how football works, guys. When you face when you face these teams, when it's these types of games, this is not a league format where you are playing game after game, week after week or maybe even midweek where you have your full squad and then you just get, you just play game after game after game. It's not like that. It's a knockout format. OK, it's like Wigan Athletic winning the FA Cup. Right. And then, and then them go, I think they got relegated the same year, right? So listen, I'm going to say this, and I'm not afraid to say this. Um, am I sad that Portugal are eliminated? 100% I'm sad, okay? But guys, there was, there was other good national teams in this competition, right? If we won it, it would have been really great, because we do have the good team for it. But listen, 
England looked great. France looked great. Um, Argentina looked great. So we lose to Morocco. You know, fair play to them. They ended up winning the game, but it was park the bus football. Okay, it's park the bus football, and that's what these teams are gonna do. Okay, you think Wigan Athletic played amazing football when they won the FA Cup? No, but it's a knockout format. You have to manage these games so differently. So, like I said, I'm not afraid to say this. Um, like I said, I do feel like these subs could have been done differently, 100%. And this is not a hindsight. I was telling my dad earlier. I was even tweeting about it, but I had to I had to delete the tweets. Not because I wasn't like 100% confident in what I'm saying. It's because I think that people nowadays are so incredibly toxic when it comes to football and you know what it's like i almost associate it with the rats that play fifa it's almost like one in the same you know what i'm saying it's almost one in the same because it's it's insane bro it's it's honestly insane the starting lineup was not incorrect gonzalo ramos just came off of a hot game R ronaldo was still subbed on the 51st minute and nothing happened you know what i'm saying i just think that this sub right here this happened way too late into the game that's that's it that's the main thing i would say so, if Santos does end up leaving us, um, he has my respect. At the end of the day, he has my respect. Uh, obviously, we lose to a team that is worse than us at the end of the day. We do. Uh, like, on paper, we do. But Spain did as well. Brazil did as well. This is football in a knockout tournament, guys. This is how it is. You have to look at it this way, man. Okay? Um, thank you for winning us the Euros. Your substitutions in the Euros were absolutely fantastic. Um, we won the Nations League because of the football that we played as well you know in the future if we get a different manager I, I, he has my respect he does he has my respect i just like i said for this game i do feel like these subs were made incorrectly because at that point you know we just have to cross the ball in and hope that someone goes for a header there is one tactic thing that i was against as well and it was near the end of the game where we had too many players in the midfield and the defense those midfielders should have committed into the 18 yard box a little bit more in those last four minutes that was a little bit weird to me right but, guys, that's football. You know, at the end of the day, Morocco won. Congrats to them. They're the first African team, I believe, to qualify for the semifinals of the World Cup. Um, to be fair, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a fan of the style of football that's been going through. Although, Santos' style of football is not, like, amazing either. But, again, it's a knockout tournament format. It's like, it, it, I, I could say the same thing for Portugal, guys. I'm being honest with you. Us winning the Euros, listen. Our style of football in the Euros wasn't great either. It wasn't okay we we won games off of penalty shootouts we won games based off of a one goal margin we won games because ronaldo did really well in some of those games to carry us you know like individual brilliance but this is the direction that football is heading towards nowadays okay for me personally this is why i like league format football more because it's based off of like a point system for the entirety of the year right if if the the only time you would get this consistent football is if you're facing a lower table team that really needs to get the one point against you, you know, that's what would happen for the most part. But I don't know, man, I think I look at I think I think I personally look at this thing in a more clear headed way. I think people allow their emotions, their toxicity, their negativity, this garbage mindset to kind of like take over a little bit like that's I can't tweet about football. I, I genuinely can't because I can't even tweet. Um like uh, that's football ggs to morocco good luck to the rest of the nations in the world cup the re the replies to that tweet completely negative you know it's just weird it's so weird i even have people ah portugal this portugal that i'm like brother i'm just here i'm just watching a game like you enjoying the football for what it is you know but this is the internet now guys like I, you don't really pay much mind to it because that's what it is you know like that's why it, it, the more mind you pay it the worse it actually gets that's that's the weird thing about it there's no win situation from this right guys watch the football make your own opinion about it at the end of the day this style of football that you want all these managers to play will not be the style of football that will consistently win you knockout tournaments okay in football nowadays with all of these teams parking the bus it will not consistently win you games it's very hard to attack against these teams that consistently do this all the time okay it's gonna be tough that's football though that's the knockout turn that's the knockout phases that's how it is man okay so at the end of the day they're gonna drop a huang car so they're gonna rub that salt right into the wound uh if you are moroccan congratulations for reaching the semifinals. uh at the end of the day you guys won we lost 
that's football that's how it happens um like i said i'm not really a huge fan of the knockout formats it's kind of like dude you know what you know what it was actually like i'll give you guys a really good example actually it's like watching liverpool versus spurs in the champions league final for the world cup it, it, it feels like that on a consistent basis the champions league in my opinion and i feel like you guys are going to agree with this the champions league in my opinion is actually significantly better through the rounds than it is in the finals the rounds are better than the finals because there's two games to play rather than like the one game i think i feel like a lot of people will agree with that to be honest with you because in that champions league with liverpool and spurs that final was horrible but it's a one-off game you guys get what i'm saying it's a one-off game so it is what it is to be fair when it comes to winning the leagues like if you do win like a league format there's a lot of variables that make you win a league as well the types of injuries that you get how good your squad depth is right there's a lot of variables when it comes to that too but honestly the best the best matchup in my opinion is the two games the way that the champions league is done especially without the home and away goal excuse me rule nowadays that i think is the most amazing setup when it comes to kind of deciding who should properly win a game because like like i said i think man city in that in those two games against madrid were the better team but they slept hard in the last in the last like minutes of the game and benzema obviously came in clutch too so it, but i think for the most part like the two game format is definitely very nice do i think they'll ever do that in the world cup probably not they want to do this new format for the world cup where it's like one it's every two years that's garbage four years is amazing okay that otherwise the world cup wouldn't carry the same value and the other thing is they want to put like 46 teams now so it's like bro if you play if you play the lesser nations for football you're gonna face four park the bus people i don't know man that's gonna throw me off a lot guys listen like i said portugal is no better uh knockout format tournaments this is how it is now fernando Santos won the euros playing this football we won the euros because of that and if we didn't have Santos, we probably wouldn't have won the euros we probably would have played better football but we wouldn't have won we wouldn't have won the euros i'm telling you guys this man this is what it is dude you have to you have to see these things bro clearly okay so listen hopefully you guys enjoy this video i'll see you guys for the final one okay peace out dudes love you guys